I think it was sometime after World War II, like in the 50s and 60s, people just started moving out to Southern California to the desert, chasing the American dream, you know, with the house and the car and the wife and the two kids. And the pool was really just like the icing on the cake. But then eventually, that first wave of people moved out of the planned communities from the 50s and 60s and they just kind of moved on. So when that first wave of people moved out, they left behind all their middle class stuff, but the people that moved in after them, they couldn't really afford it because the government bought up a lot of the property and moved in people on public assistance and they couldn't really afford to keep the lawns green and the pools clean and full and soon paradise just kind of turned to shit. We're just lucky as skaters, you know, because we get to see the use in all this stuff. It's like, if we weren't skating these pools, they'd just be another part of the great American wasteland, you know? In Southern California especially, I mean, you're driving around and, you know, you always have your eyes open for anything skatable, but especially a pool, it's a special thing. I mean, but you always like these five foot high or six foot high fences that like just go high enough that you can't look over them. Like often those are the ones pools are behind. I mean, the situation's gnarly. You're about to trespass. Like you got to jump over the fence quick and get in there and hope that nobody saw you do it. But when you find the pool, it's like this thing that's like, it should be condemned. And then skaters find it, and they're like, the first thing they do is start to clean it up and, you know, get really down and dirty. I mean, down on your hands and knees and with a bucket and with a towel and your T-shirt and anything you can find in your hands to clean this thing up. And it's like full of shit. I mean, disgusting slime, you know, anti-freeze green water and like dead rats and furniture and you know it's just the most disgusting mixture of solids and liquids you'd ever see but you're going to deal with it because you know it's this pool that you want to skate even if it's not even that good <laughs> drought happened in 75 and 
right after the Urethane Wheel, and all these houses in L.A. had all the, you know so many pools, and they they had to be drained. There was sort of this directive that pool, water from the pools be used to water the lawns, and you know water could only be used for really important things. So pools were drained. You had all these skaters just starting to ride pools, and all of a sudden there were like thousands of them empty. And this pushed skating forward so much. I mean, everything skating is now really develops all the basics, like getting to the top of the pool basin, getting back down, going side to side, and doing stuff at the top. That whole sort of mindset of doing that and the reality of physically doing it all came from that period. So what's up, Sal? We're clearing the path for future uh, trips. Yeah. I just don't like jump if I don't have to, you know? There's only like a particular breed of individual and, you know, so many pockets of people through the United States who actually relish and like to like ride pools and actually go out of their way to drain and actually have pumps and generators and do anything it takes to, to drain them. I mean, which I love to do because, I mean, it's, it's a whole adventure. It was so hot out here. I mean, wherever there's heat, you're gonna have pools. So, I mean, it's just more of a Western United States phenomenon, I think, than anything. So tell me, who came up with the name Salvaland anyway? I think that whole thing's a whole farce myself. I didn't really stoke on it, to tell you the truth. It was just like, Peter King and Sly, those guys made it up, basically, just because. It was just like, as far as the skateboard deal goes, it was like Disneyland to them, where they could just have fun and go on their little rides and, you know. I always thought pool riding was kind of the equivalent of a, wow, that house was fucking empty right there. Pool's a different adventure. It's like, you know, it's like hunting, you know? It's like everything's got a different way to deal with it, different set of rules, a different environment, depending on what kind of situation. Just all depends whether it's a hut house, a real estate house, 
the house has been burned down. You know, it all really depends on who owns it and what kind of neighborhood it's in. You know, that's, that's why it's such a good thing when you do find a good pool because you're always thinking, like, it was never made to skate, it was made to swim in. So it's just like a fluke in nature that, like, for 30 years this has been going on, you know? That's the beauty of skateboarding, is it's adapted to like the landscape, kind of like how I say like Darwin's little survival of fittest deal, you know? It's just like it's constantly changing and constantly just adapting somehow. I mean, Baldi's kind of like, everybody who skates fucking should make a, a pilgrimage to Baldi at one point, as far as I'm concerned. If you're a true skateboarder, you should put Baldy on your list of shit that you skated, you know? The main reason they made it is so all the water didn't flood the whole area. And then they had to have a runoff because every dam has to have like a pipe siphon runoff so when the dam is too full, they gotta get rid of the water. Pat Mullis, he was the one who basically the first guy I've ever talked to known that he's the guy who found the deal. Match was the first guy to actually skate in, and that was in 69. I want to do some skateboarding in that pool. Can we Instead do it? making a movie. Don't you don't know? Because somebody was here before. I don't know who was here before, but somebody was here before and they got kicked out. The owner said no. Do you like 10 minutes or something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 15 minutes tops, but you got to hurry and go. All right. The owner's yes. What it is, is this actually geographically called the Salton Sink. It's this depression in the lower, lower California, right near the Mexican border. It's right at sea level. And water would collect there after like, you know, the seasonal rains. But when the Colorado River was being diverted for all these irrigation projects in the early 20th century, in 1905, there was this breach of this irrigation canal and the water flowed into the salt and sink and everything was fine for about 20 or 30 years and that's like when it had its resort era but the cumulative effect as the bigger sort of agribusiness started of uh fertilizers which also contain a lot of salt coming into the sea that's what really increased the salinity made the the water rise and uh, started killing off the fish with the algae blooms, killing off the birds with the bacteria infestations, and basically wrecked this whole sort of resort economy that had uh, started up around there. 
I mean, it's really like, it's like hell. <laughs> it's hot as hell and it smells really bad because all the dead fish, there's like, no matter where you go, there are dead fish on the beach. And it's just incredibly desolate. There's hardly anybody around. The people that live there are kind of like out of this California version of deliverance or something. And it's just kind of like sketchy, hot as hell, and really inhospitable. And um, it's like this totally, it was this sort of paradise, but now it's just totally fucked up. <laughs> the smell is it's something like all the worst smells you can imagine like rotting food and something kind of like like a dead animal but there's some it's like you can tell it's sort of seeped into the earth like the land there and the water the, the water is giving off this incredibly sort of putrid saltiness it's like It's something, I don't know, it's like, there's nothing fresh, like decay has like a fresh smell because there's something that was alive recently, like plant decay, but there it's like this sort of old dead smell and it's like compounded by the heat. It's like a horrible putrid smell that's being baked and making it even worse. Shit's gonna be underground no matter how much everybody blows it up. It's like you're sneaking in the fucking backyard, trespassing, skating pools. Who cares?
See, the area around Phoenix is called the Valley of the Sun. Temperatures get up in the 120s around summertime with all the rich codgers and old coots who live around there. There are some neighborhoods where every single house has its own pool. Add in a little graft, some bankruptcy, a freeway coming through every once in a while. These houses get abandoned and pool riders' prayers are answered. There are times back when I was living there when the pools were so plentiful, we could just pick and choose which ones to ride. When was the first year you skated Gonzales Pool? I graduated from Samuel High in 75, so I was like about 16, about 17, 17 years old. We skated it till it was like about 18 or 19, then it got shut down. And every 10 years, there's been like a couple of years here and there that we've we've ended up skating it again. It's amazing that it's skatable right now again, dude. Hola, como esta? These are my friends from New York that we're gonna do some camera work with. I just wanted you to meet them real quick. Okay. This is Senor Gonzalez. Oh, okay. Oh, breakfast nook. Anybody even nowadays, you know, that's never seen pool skating, you take them to a pool and you just go, this is the closest thing to surfing. It's obvious, dude. They're gonna agree with you, like, unless they're completely oblivious to the fact that that's what the roots of skateboarding pools and stuff is all about, surfing. You're basically surfing concrete. That's why we started doing 180s and lip turns and hitting the lip on pools, is because we're basically emulating hitting the lip of a wave. Skateboarding just took it to another level, especially skating in pools. Probably about 73, 74, started doing airs, frontside airs. It took people time, you know, to just open their eyes and just see what was going on and catch up. I mean, dude, we were way ahead when it came to that shit. There wasn't anybody Guys in San Diego will try and contest that and say, oh, dude, we were doing airs back. And the guys in Badlands will say, well, we started doing airs a year or two up. Whatever, dude, you can contest that shit, but I know I was there, dude. The shit was going down in Dogtown way before the shit went down anywhere else. Perfect square pool in there, bone Did that cop just leave? Yeah. We're gonna barge it. Good pool? Perfect. It's decent. Five's gotten away with an hour. Five's gotten away with an hour before here. Is this place uh, in operation? Yeah, and he's gotten away with it before. And when they, they just said leave. Let's give it a shot. By the time they come kick us out, we were already got some runs in. Can we pay you some money? Can we skate oh, with you? Can we pay you money? We gotta go. Oh. Let's get out of here. Let's play. Fuck! You gotta skate that shit, dude. So when we were in Fresno, the Vagabond pool was under pretty close watch and we snuck in in the middle of the night and slept in the pool. When we got up in the morning, we got to skate for a little while.
that ID? Sure. Put it in your wallet? Nobody can see it. 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 Not be on this property. Uh, eventually we got kicked out though, so we went out to hook up with some friends of ours from San Francisco that were coming through and uh, they took us to some of their, you know, some of their standby pools. Um, so, you know, we got the rights of pools after all. call this pool the Samoan because these kids, the neighbor kids used to watch us from the yard, the next door yard, and they were trying to tell us about the people that used to live there and saying how they used to sacrifice animals and all this shit in the backyard. And we, you know, we were saying, oh, so what, they were Satanists or something? They, no, 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 they were Samoans. There was an empty pool on my street. That was the first one I rode right across the street from my house. It was probably, I think, right around there. Over the past 10 years, I've probably ridden a couple hundred. You're riding concrete and stuff that's not made to be ridden, and you're constantly searching for new spots, and um, you're constantly getting hassled, you know? It's always trespassing. There's very few up here. Most of the pools are in nice areas, so they're, they're more of a, it's more of a hassle. You know, there's, there's more risk of getting busted. Whereas down south, there's so many pools and just terrible neighborhoods. You know, that used to be decent middle class neighborhoods and now are just shitholes. the most with Matt Neely. He's probably the most you know, driven of the bunch. I, I, anybody, man. I, I'm, I'm down to ride with anybody.
What's the deal with renegade skate parks? That means build your own paradise. Public is the way to go, you know, public skate park with no rules is basically the way to go, you know, self-policed. The design has to come from skaters and it has to be flexible, you know, and uh, or either that or, or they have to award the whole contract, you know, to, to skaters, a company that's, that's uh, you know, run by skaters that has a crew big enough to go do the construction. I think if there's a tennis courts and, and, and basketball goals and all those monkey bars and everything else, they're spending $800,000, you know, for these little just do nothing parks. And you don't see kids swarming the park like, you know, like, like this thing skateboarding. It's just people are seeing how, how, how skateboarding, you know, a kid flowing around a park. You know, it's, it's a lot different than seeing them out in front of the supermarket. I heard about Dawkins doing his stuff down here, so just ended up moving down here and working with him on the Jacksonville Park and Talent, Ashland. thing about these guys is that you know up north there aren't any pools they're you know like in Southern California it's just the weather is not permitting so they took matters in their own hands and they built pools and things to skate that is you know because it wasn't there their, their, their needs weren't met they didn't want to move to Southern California just to skate so they created their own scene and built their own pools and their own parks red just called me up and said he had a job down here and come down and put in my two cents worth. I, I figure wasn't really for my concrete knowledge, but more, uh, more someone to back him up when he wanted to make something bigger. You know, because he knows that I like bigger stuff too, so he didn't want to be the only one fighting for the big fur. We had a rough design and then we kind of changed it every day. We'd skate the little piece we'd pour and we'd go, okay, something's got to go over there that's big and different. We kind of designed it as we went along and I think that was the very best way to do it. If skaters design it and build it, it's, it's flawless. You can have no mistakes and if you do, it's like all your fault. See. The contractors blame it on the designers, and the designers blame it on the contractors. And I think since we've been here, we've heard of three shitty parks that have gone up in the immediate area. There's too many fingers in the pudding. I mean, we'll, we design it, the shit for free, just because we, we want it to be good. Just laid little banks here and there, and then uh, you know, you learn little and you pick up a little, and then pretty soon you're building bigger banks and bigger bowls and pools, and it just goes on and on. It's 
crazy the way they did it. You know, just every day going in there and, and keeping the keeping the place clean and keeping the garbage out and somehow keeping the cops from arresting them and and making probably what most people consider one of the best skate parks in the world all by themselves without asking anybody's permission or you know getting the go-ahead from anybody. We built a bowl under a bridge in West Seattle in 92, and we're going to try to make it like, you know, renegade bowl build. And the cops came, and when we were mixing the concrete, they had their guns out and told us to stop everything and made us tear out the bowl. And then <clears throat> my neighbor was like, wow, you guys could build that bowl in my yard. And we're like, okay. And so we built it in his yard, and then he moved to Hawaii, and we ended up buying the house. And we dug it all with shovels. It took us about a year. And people would come together and put in money and labor, and pretty soon, about, you know, a year of work, and we, it was done.
stand as president, I say we have a skate bowl in every school. We need to give kids an alternative sport. Dude, you know what I mean? I tried to play that baseball and do the football, but they're like, oh, Quirk, you're not good enough. You play the fifth quarter. But, you know, I found skateboarding. I'm like, dude, this is like, I don't need a judge or I don't need the boss or the coach. My brothers were like, Quirk, do you go harder? I had my, you know, it was a different. Our scene's better than theirs, man. Their scene is like dying. I'm telling you what, man, I've met my best friends through skateboarding and riding empty swimming pools, man. Like, there's this guy named Nels Grevstad. He's one of the geniuses of skating, man. He's like, but you know what? I met the dude in an empty swimming pool. Phone is like, they let us ride the place because we clean up after ourselves. We just took the place over because people used to always break bottles in it and we just kept cleaning it up and eventually they just stopped breaking bottles and now we own the place. And if we play our cards right, we can ride it for years and years and years to come. You know, rumor has it that there's three more down here, but we tried digging for them, you know? This old lady told us there was more fish ponds, but we couldn't find them, so this is the one. I think she was seen out. You don't need any any strangers. I mean, it's cool if you find it, but you're not gonna get the directions from me. You take all the same problems that you have trying to find a good pool down in Southern California, and you move to the Northeast, where first of all, we hardly have any pools. Besides that, most pools that people have in their backyards are those above ground pools. Then you got to deal with winter, which is snow and ice and rain, and the pools are all filled with water for over half the year. And besides that, they cover them in the winter time. So you know, you put all that stuff together, and it's pretty much next to impossible to find, you know, a really good pool. But um, a couple weeks before Memorial Day is when people um, take the covers off and start to clean the pools and drain them, get them ready for the summer season, and that's when skaters are all looking around, searching for a good one and. You know, every once in a while you get lucky. James and myself used to swim in Fort Devens 27 years ago. Yeah, that's a rash, and the military bro. base just by chance happened to close because all the cuttings. Like, oh. Yeah, so like, bam, James is like, oh, fucking Fort Devens. Remember the pool? There's a pool there. Yeah. Bam gets it going and able to skate it, you know? It's like few and far between, few and, far between and for people like us, we probably skate more pools than we swim in. I have a picture of the first day I ever rode here. Like September 12th or something, 77. It's been skatable forever. We used to think it was a piece of shit. Just because, you know, we'd see all those pictures in the 70s, perfect pools and stuff. And, but, you know, it's got its own appeal, too. It's, it's, just, it's just gnarly. It's, people come here and they, you know, they don't want to ride this thing because they can't make all their tricks. It's more about survival. Either 85 or 86, first time I ever skated there. And every year since, I've skated every fall and every spring, never missed once. For the past, whatever, 15 years. Camera pool. I don't know of any other pool, any skate park, anything associated with skateboarding that's been skateboarded for that long. Like, it's been going non stop for like 30 years.
95 South. Yeah. Bolt Kim Hall. They got it. Vinny's a tattoo guy from uh, Westminster, and he uh, ha has friends that are skateboarders, and one of the tattoo guys who own the place, is part owner is a um, skater, and when they bought this place, they didn't, they just, you know, they were talking about filling it up and stuff and using it as a swimming pool, and they had a guy come from a pool service, and they were like, you're basically going to have to uh, do everything, it would be like more than build a new pool, so uh, Vinny was like, fuck it, and started letting us ride. no snowboarding bullshit dude you hit the fucking ground man and it hurts dude and there ain't your fucking girlfriend or your mom ain't gonna help you dude because you're gonna have to pay for that pain dude and I know for real dude because I've paid a lot I paid 25 years of fucking pain and when you're gonna look me in the face and say you can fucking man pay your fucking dues dude you want to be in the skate army you want to be in the skate marines skate fucking airborne you better pay your fucking dues, dude. It's no fun to break your leg and sit in the, in the fucking hospital and everybody shoots you up with drugs and shit. But this shit's for real, dude. This is like the Hells Angels or the fucking Gypsy Jokers or the Banditos. We got our own fucking gang. And you better not fuck with us, dude. Cool riding is this, dude. You're in a hole. You're at one with the earth, dude. You're rolling around. Not everybody rides pools, dude. We all just get in together and just... It's... You're in the hole, dude. You feel the energy, man. It's easy. You just gotta do it, man. I have a couple friends who... I always give them shit because they never come up with any pools. So finally they came up with a pool. And it's like, fuck, it's about time. And I had to clean it out. Got, got a couple buddies together. Had to pump out some of, some of the gnarliest stuff I've come across so far. There were bugs in there that were like albino fucking something that just like lived in that black like death water. It was gnarly. We had it, it took us two days. We came out here with a generator one day. Had to come back the next day. And we skated it, and that was the last time I've been here. Bust the bottoms out and kill it. Yeah. Oh, they actually bust the bottoms out, huh? Mm -hmm. Huh. You gotta bust the concrete out of the bottom, and then you gotta fill it. How about that? All right. I mean, they got plumbing, and after a while, that plumbing isn't any good, and we can't be letting somebody just dig the dirt out. Right. Fill it up, and make another pool out of it. Right. Gotta come in and re-plumb and everything, rewire for electric, a whole bit. So you don't know where any empty ones are offhand. All right. I did. If I did, I'd have somebody out filling them. <laughs> it wouldn't do you guys no good. <laughs> well, we're trying to beat you to it. <laughs> Make a list of all the ones you find and you get your pictures, then call them in to me. All right. I'll, get, I'll have them full the next time you come around. <laughs> we'll make sure not to call you. <laughs> My skate. So we all get away. We all like go down the street about a mile. We all pull over everything. Cool, we got everything. Oh fuck, where's my skate? Oh, the fire. oh we left it there. Oh fuck. 
my skateboard's gone. I just got a ticket going 95 on the way here. I almost get taken to jail on the freeway. So I'm late. Now this shit happens. Now my skateboard's gone. Fuck, I'm going home, man. I'm just pissed. I'm just... Uh, and all of a sudden... Here comes a guy in his Cadillac. Oh, there you are. His friend's in there. You know, gets out, starts writing our license plates down, and the dogs in the back seat. Rah, rah, rah. My skateboard's propped up against the back seat. I'm all, no way, my skateboard. And the guy's like, I'm gonna, you guys are getting arrested. And he, I'm, all, I'm calling the police right now. He's on the cell phone dial. His friend's like taking the license plates. And then the dog's all, rap, 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 rap. And my, I'm all, get in the car, get my, ah! I just get the dog, get my skateboard, get in my car, and I'm gone. Ah! Daryl D's behind me, and the guy like gets his caddy and starts trying to follow us. But like the first, the first ride, second ride, break. I'm out of there, lost. And the guy chased Daryl D all over San Diego for an hour, for an hour. So like, you know, eight o'clock. I said, "Fuck this." I went home. You know, I got my skate though. I was super stoked on that. Eight o'clock, I get home. Julie's like, "Hey, you know, the San Diego police just called for you." I'm like, what really? Whoa, what's up on that? I'll you know? challenge anybody in the United so States right now. I got a hundred dollar bill that says I can fucking run you into the ground. Yeah. I got a hundred to back it. So come man, Pierre, John Hudson, the fucking, uh, the big daddy, you know all you motherfuckers man, step up all you talk dudes, let's see how fast you can go. Look at the lean mean fighting machine man. You think 36, motherfucker? Come on, man. Come on, dude. Tom Hogarty's, the Silver Surfer, the, the Eureka Flash. Good. Come on, man. Take me on on my hometown with fucking hyper rolls. I'm going to beat y'all. Chef Pierre, eat your fucking crabs and shit. Because I'm calling you fucking out. You come up to here and we'll race to Wenatchee, dude. 100 miles, dude. And I'll dust your fucking ass. You come up to the Northwest. And you take us on. I'm not talking shit, dude. I got a hundred dollars that says I'll run your fucking ass into the ground. It's about 1977. I was about 14, maybe 13 years old. I told my parents, like, oh, you gotta come see us. You gotta see us skate these things. They just empty a swimming pool and we skated. And I was all excited. So they drove me down to the pool to check it out. And I jumped out of the car, ran through the gate into the backyard before they even had got out of the car. They got out of the car, came in the back, turned the corner and saw me lying in the pool, knocked out in the bottom. They took me to the hospital. I was in the hospital unconscious for five hours. The older guys around the block and around the area that had pools and knew of other pools would not let me go skate them anymore. They're like, you can't take that guy. He's the guy that closes, got the pool closed because he can't skate, got himself knocked out, this and that. But uh, it's all part of it. It's fun.